phenomenon that repeats, that its practitioners always look larger upon it than they are in life. Little and live is therefore the rule of the air, as it is, as the Shah Ivan is well known for the one. A big flyer looks like a clumsy flyer, no matter how great the art. The ideal female flyer turns the scale at, say, 100 pounds, and stands no higher in her slippers than five feet. Her male partner might give her perhaps 10 more pounds and three more inches, but still he will be a small man on the ground. Though he might look like a Greek god as he hurtles through the air at those speeds of theirs in excess of 60 miles an hour. Feathers, remember, was six feet two in her stockinged feet and turned the scale at 14 English square. God, she looked huge. <laughs> her crimson purple wings in flight obscured the roof tree of the imperial circus. Yet those marmorial immense arms and legs of hers, as they made leisurely <coughs> swimming movements through the air, looked palely unconvincing, as if arbitrarily tacked onto the bird of fire. Walser, drawn to the ring like a moth to the flame, thought, as he had before, she looks wonderful, but she doesn't look right. Yet he could not put his finger on what was wrong, could not identify in quite what way the proportions seemed distorted, since there existed no correct proportions to compare hers with it. Or was the trouble this? There was an air about her that suggested, while convincing others, she herself remained unconvinced about the precise nature of her own allegiance. The slowness of her trajectory, her modest charge at 25 miles an hour, was the whole trick. It made the Sharivaris huff. With her right hand, she caught hold of the rung of the trapeze. There was a clean, twining snap, a rope broke. Snap was. These long hairs did not know the first rule of the spectacle that the show must go on. <laughs> and now the ride of the Valkyrie's superb play broke down on an aghast discord as the trapeze dropped feathers a dozen feet and left her swinging to and fro like a pendulum above the tiny eye of swords the vortex of gravity down there, down below. Her wings quivered, and the little feathers round the edges nervously whipped the air. But she showed no fear, even if she felt it. She twisted round and with her free hand waved, or as they say in the circus, style, at the imperial box in an ironic gesture. She even poked out her tongue. Musicians, horns and fiddles dangling from their hands, the Colonel also watched, helpless, heart in mouth for an endless minute. The Shalivari's on edge, watching. Only in her good time did she agitate her pendulum. She swung upon it faster and faster, and when she gained enough momentum, only then did she let go and launch herself off again to arrive at the other side of the big top. She landed upon the other trapeze, abruptly sat, briskly furled, folded her arms like a furious washerwoman, and vast, immobile, sulking, ignored the commotion that broke out below. Well, she won't come now. Why did nobody test the rope? What murderous fuckers have been tinkering with the ring? <laughs> High as she was, you could hear every word. A roustabout discovered the rope which snapped <coughs> at the neatly sawn half through. 